there. If you're seeing this video on YouTube, it's because of the generous support of my patrons. They give me funds to do a few extra videos a month and then release them to you at a later date. I'm so thankful for all of them, past, present, and future, and here are some of their names. Um, so thank you to them, and if you're interested in joining Patreon to support my work and join the community, um, there's links in the description box below. Awesome. Enjoy the session. Hey there, today's topic has been picked by my patrons. It's a longer session. We're going to be connecting with our hearths and our homes and our places that we live. Um, and hopefully in that connecting process, starting to cleanse out and be more intentional as we work with place. Um, since this is a longer session, I'm going to be moving through several stones. I'm going to describe them as we go. Um, but something that is a little different today is I am going to start with you first, um, not with a cleanse like I normally do. I really want to work with you and empower and attune you to being able to work with your home. So it's not me using my energy or my Reiki to cleanse out your home. Hopefully I am using you as um, kind of a beacon there and we're making sure that you're attuned and aligned to your own place and then you, through you, can cleanse it because obviously I don't know your homes. Um, so just putting that energy out there a little bit different and I'll describe it as I go through so that hopefully it makes sense. So one of the first things I wanted to do was start with a candle. Um, I'm using one of my grounding candles, but it doesn't matter what candle it is. That seemed like the right intention um, for this. And I'm hoping that maybe you have a candle on your end. It doesn't need to be any particular kind of candle, but just something that you can light within your home to work as kind of a connection for you too. So, can be a taper candle, can be, you know, a jar candle, can be a Yankee candle, whatever feels right to you. Um, maybe lighting your candle at the same time on your end to start to grow your connection to your place. Um, so I'm going to start with this candle. And I chose this one because it's got um, lots of little kind of earthy bits. It's all about connecting and grounding with the earth. Um, and when we think about grounding, sometimes we um, think about it as a one-way connection. Like I'm going to release my energy into the earth and ground it. But really it's a reciprocal connection as you, like you think about a tree's roots. This is the tree works with the earth it is pulling and receiving and releasing and receiving um, so we're looking for that reciprocal connection that grounding to find strength coming back up and to release and kind of using each other to help so i'm gonna light this candle and if you have one on your end you can light it too Just taking a moment, I know not everyone can light a candle, so maybe lighting a candle is in um, if you can. But we're looking to start to create a space in our home that is the hearth. You know, not everybody has a wood stove, I don't. Um, but we're looking for that center of your home, and so maybe you could place that candle there and starting to create a space that is dedicated to your communion and communication with your place. And this can work if you own a home, if you have land, if you live in an apartment, if you live in a van. And so if you can on your end, lighting your candle and trying to find a place within your home that can serve as a hearth that feels maybe like a center or a small refuge or retreat, but this is not just meant for people that own land. This is all of us live in a place. All of us um, will always live in a place that's part of being a physical being, is you have to be somewhere. And I think that we 
disconnect ourselves from place a lot and could find a lot of healing in reconnecting there and realizing we have um, a relationship with our land, with our homes, with our spaces. So we're really starting to bring ourselves into that mindset and having a physical altar, having a flame to focus on, having a focal point like a candle can help. So I'm going to put this, I have this little tiny spot that I usually have candles on back there. I'm going to put it back there. And for me, that is a little spot for this area, this part of the house, because it was added on. So it's kind of like my um, home altar that I keep for this part of the house. Okay, so I'm gonna put this candle back there and let it burn throughout the session. And we're gonna check in with it right at the end, okay? I'm gonna bring you back. So I've got that going there and it'll burn throughout the session, but now I want to work a little bit with you, making sure that you feel attuned to your space, that you feel empowered to start this work, because it can be um, challenging to work with a space. I'm going to assume that most, all of us are not living in our dream homes, because that's kind of not usually the case. We're usually living in an apartment or house that we was within our budget. Um, we maybe see a lot of Instagram photos of what we think the perfect space is like. And much of working with place is healing old wounds, acceptance, um, those kind of things. So as we go through this, I'm going to work with just a, sort of attuning you first. And I've got a few crystals. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to use a few stones now to attune, um, kind of work with your energy, hopefully making you a bit like a little um, beacon for your home. So I'm going to start with this celestial quartz, and not only do I like the shape of kind of empowering you to be this beacon that interacts with your space, but I like celestial quartz for how it connects us to this web of um, everything, honestly. It's people, places, memories, time. There's this web of all these interacting energy points, and I feel like it allows us access to that web in a higher realm, in our um, thinking consciousness. So connecting to things consciously. And then I have amphibole quartz, which I'm going to use afterwards, and this one feels a lot more earthy to me. Um, I find like it is connecting to the kind of um, those spirits or angels or worlds within ourselves and in our subconscious, kind of the things that bubble up. So tuning both our higher selves and our lower selves and making sure that they are ready to connect and um, open to new relationships with your space. So I'm going to start with the Elestial. I'm so sorry if I've said it already, but this will probably be talking heavy in the beginning, just to, there's a lot of stuff to get across. So I'm going to start by opening up the crown and the third eye and the throat, more on the upper chakras. starting to pull those connections in, finding that place in the web that we belong. And I don't know if you can hear, or this mic will pick it up, but on Thursday nights, my town has family bingo at the little center across the way. And so you may pick up some of that. 
Normally I record on other evenings to avoid that sound, but I forgot. And then as I started, I kind of realized that was perfect. And what I mean by that is connection to place is never going to be perfect. Like I talked about, we're not in our dream homes. We may not have the best neighbor. We may not have the best community or the best soundscapes for recording. But it's so important to just kind of take things as they are and accept them and then work from there. We're never trying to create a perfect world trying to create perfect relationships within the world we're given. I shouldn't say perfect either, because nothing is. Not even relationships, but hopefully you know what I mean. We're trying to find that right relation. So just bringing in some of those connections, maybe some were open, some were closed, and just allowing each of them to flow. And as we move through this session, it might be helpful to think about the things that you love about where you live, the things that you dislike, starting to really be more aware and intentional about these things. So we can work with releasing and transforming as much as possible our relationship to our space. So that is connecting us to kind of the awareness of all other beings around us, connecting us to that web of awareness and consciousness. Um, I work with the belief that all things are alive, um, including things that we don't think are alive. They all have story and energy and movement through our world and so being aware and connected to them as much as possible is very critical for working with your your space and your home. And then this one, amphibole courts, or it's sometimes called um, angel phantom courts, just for those sort of wispy bits within. And I love this one just for the connection to inner angels, um, inner gods those sort of bits. 
So bringing that um, and connecting them together. So kind of thinking about it as the unconscious, the collective unconscious of everything connecting to the collective awareness of everything. So finding the place where those meet, starting to work with subtle energies within. Allowing those little phantoms of energy to come into our awareness. Hopefully providing some clarity and magic to work with. as we're working with this stone, maybe thinking about the ways you feel when you're home. Do you feel safe? Do you feel overwhelmed? And this is more about those subconscious feelings that you're not even aware of. Maybe. Maybe places in your home that you feel the best versus ones that you feel just a little out of sorts. Letting those bubble up so we can be a little more aware of what energy is around you. Again, we're trying to make you the beacon in this work and kind of connect you to where you are. So the more that you're bringing your thinking mind and your subconscious mind to your space and connecting, the more the next part will help. Pulling up all those little energies, hopefully empowering you to be a solid piece. And now that we've connected kind of the subconscious with our awareness and all of that together, we're going to kind of work with that place where they meet. <clears throat> and I have a little piece of tectite. And tectite is what is the glass that's made when ancient meteors hit the earth. So it is a combination of kind of a celestial and earthly realm meeting and that transformation that can happen in that collision. And we're going to use this to attune those two energies together and creating a solid beacon of awareness and connection within you. And I like to think about it as bridging that 
physical and spiritual realms together and that attunement that happens when we do that. And you can also think about it as an attunement between your physical space and my spiritual space or my physical space and your spiritual space because we're making that exchange in this moment. So we're looking to connect so many things together at this intersection. And I'm going to bring in a Reiki symbol here, Choku Rei, and that is very much about drawing down all of the energy of the universe and placing it here. And that can feel really good for balance and strengthening and healing because honestly we're putting this oneness, this wholeness here in our space. So now that you are kind of a more beacon of energy in your space, we want to bring down the universe and allow it to expand in a natural way in your space. Cho, Ku, Rei. And I'm just sealing that in. Sealing that in. some extra swirls to this one. Really just expanding that energy out. Allowing you to be connected to everything around you. as a beacon within this space and how we're going to start working with that space. So I'm going to start with our smoke cleanse now and hopefully it'll work in my space and in yours and really um, cleansing and starting that process, okay? So bringing in a little smoke and hopefully you're feeling attuned for this work so that we're not just cleansing you, we're starting to 
cleanse out any distracting unwanted energy and when it comes to thinking about place and how we relate to it some of the work will be letting go of other energy that's unwanted and some of it will be healing so there's often a lot of healing within the land even if you don't own your house, you are on land somehow, somewhere. And healing all of that can be a lot of work. It can take time. But right now, we're just going to let go of the stuff that's just kind of surface level. So that you can start to see things maybe need to be addressed, ways you can help or heal. Just bringing that all back and forth. And now is when you can start to really anchor into your body, start slowing your breath, calming your mind, and allowing the energy to flow a little bit more. Before was a little bit about the conscious work, and now we can allow energy and intentions to just flow through us. Allow some natural cleansing to happen. This is a time, this is a time when we are looking to kind of let go of energy that's stagnant. Let going of unwanted energy that could just be moved along, it's taking up space. Just kind of relaxing into that process that happens when we become more aware of things. When we work with attention, intention, and awareness together, we can sort of steer the ship. I do want to let go at this time too, I want to let go of the idea that we are the absolute power in our space and that we're making things serve us or we're making, we're dominating that space. We want it to be much more reciprocal. We want to add value to the space, to the place, to the land, and we want the land to enrich us. It's a, it's a back and forth, it's a relationship. And so any ideas that we dominate or own or anything like that should be cleansed out too. We don't own anything, just like nothing owns us. And so yes, in our modern world we have property rights and yada yada, but that is just passing through. That is not how we connect or are a part of our place. That doesn't really enter into the energetic relationship that you're looking to build.
And so now I wanted to bring in some brown agates. And this has all these lovely layers. I really want to reiterate that places are always there. They're just layer upon layer. This You can almost think about this as paint in a house where the landlord just keeps painting and painting and painting. And each little layer or each little ring of the tree is adding another layer. But it doesn't erase the layers below. There is so much history in land, especially if you're like me in Americas, a lot of pain and healing and suffering has happened on the land that we live. And we're always looking to look at that story, these layers, as honestly and authentically and truthfully as possible. And so while those are difficult conversations, they are part of healing our relationship with land. It's acknowledging past, whether good or bad. And so starting to open up those doorways to that healing that can take place, which is very, can be difficult, can be really um, triggering for a lot of emotions we don't know why we have, because we all came to this at different moments, different places, different um, relationships to our past and past peoples. So not looking to solve everything in a day, but we want to make sure that we're acknowledging that continual growth and layers of different things that have happened. And there is not a piece of land on this earth that doesn't have a deep history. So wherever you are, that wasn't just targeted to um, people in the Americas. I didn't mean to make that assumption, but just knowing where I'm coming from. Acknowledging some of the history of my land. Maybe who came before. opening ourselves up to that healing that happens when we bring things into the light and look at them honestly understanding the past helps us guide our future to make things more whole for everyone And just by coming into your home and coming into your place, I don't mean for you to heal the entire world, but heal your little community, heal your immediate family, those kind of things. Because if each of us, each person watching this video starts to work on those things, creating places that they love to live, communities that they love to live in, what a beautiful place, a beautiful world we can make with that. By each of us pitching in. All of us around the globe, I like that idea.
as you start to open yourself up to this work, it might be good to understand the history of your land. I live in Vermont and I live um, a traditionally Abenaki land, which is mostly gone at this point. New England really kind of pushed things out and there's not much surviving from that. But beginning to learn that history and the people involved is, can be really healing for a lot of people, understanding other perspectives to that place. And not just the territories, the lines, the maps, either. Um, one of my favorite books is uh, Braiding Sweetgrass. And she talks about, in that book, Maple Nation, as in the area where maple syrup comes from, which Vermont is one of those. And how something like that, a natural feature, spans across into Canada and over into New York and some of Maine and New Hampshire and that Maple Nation, people that live in places that have maple syrup for everything, it works its way into food and culture and so sometimes the stories about place come from more than just the history of the land but how that land food and imports and exports and business and so all of that story around place and stories that we have around um, years of living in these places are kind of on the periphery of you blessing your home, blessing your apartment, blessing maybe your one room in a little dorm room, whatever it is, those are the bigger pictures. And we're going to start pulling our awareness in as we go, but starting with the big picture around us, being aware of community and history, past, present, future and bringing it in a little deeper to our neighborhood. And thinking about the culture there, maybe you live near water or someplace where it's busy traffic. Maybe near a shopping mall. Maybe in the middle of nowhere. And as you come in, thinking about that and how that shapes your home. Maybe there's a favorite corner store. Maybe there's a tree down at the park that you enjoy starting to bring it in because as there's layers through history and time there's layers to our field of awareness starting big bringing it in being aware of your neighbors maybe some of them you love and hold dearly and you trade treats give each other sugar I don't know if that happens anywhere maybe Maybe you have loud, noisy neighbors that drive big trucks and it annoys you. It's okay. We're just looking at the layers that make up what we call our home, what make our place, our town, neighborhood, street, and then bringing it into your building, whatever it is, the people that you live with, your pets, the pests that live in your house. <laughs> Maybe you have mites or bugs or flies. I have always had flies here in the country. They are part of it. And just bringing our awareness in. And as we think about our place and how we heal and bless and empower it, we want to be aware of all those shifting connections. And again, not to heal it in one moment, but just being aware of it, witnessing it, being a part of it. Okay. So that was Brown Agate.
talking about all the layers of things. And then I have another agate, and this one is moss agate, and I really like it for in general, it's just good for luck and growth and um, fertility, kind of new things. But in a lot of ways, it's about going back to roots and the simplicity of things. So we're starting to be more aware of our surroundings and then bringing in some luck and blessings and looking at how we can heal and simplify and bring things back into that natural balance state as much as possible. we think about home and hearth, it is an ever-changing thing, just like everything else. You redecorate, you buy a new piece of furniture, you rearrange a room, add on an addition, move, you know, where you are includes so many of those things. And just simplifying our look at it. So we're more aware of what's working and what isn't. And even if you move often and you are shifting from one house to another and think that this can't work, you're always bringing a lot of stuff with you. Um, pets, partners, children, couches go from one place to the other and they form home for you as well. In our finding of simplicity, we're choosing out the things that seem to work for us and allowing them to grow. So maybe it's something about the way you decorate your house, or your cleaning routine, what makes your space feel good. And we're looking to nurture and find those little things and empower them. So choosing the little things that you like and just pulling them out to the surface. Maybe you like it when your bed is made and your house just feels better. Maybe it's when your sink is shined every night. Maybe it's when your kitchen is a mess and you're in the middle of baking for friends. Maybe it's when you watch movies on Friday nights and the smell of popcorn fills your house. We're trying to pick out and not pulling out, not taking them, but trying to highlight them, bring them to the surface, those kind of moments when things feel right. A lot of times when we talk about blessing and luck and growth, what we're talking about is finding and empowering those bits that are already working. You know, it's growth. We're finding those little seeds and growing up. Maybe it's your coffee on your backyard in the morning. The way the house smells when you come home. Or your pet always sleeping on your chair, making it a mess, but you somehow you love it. Whatever those things are, maybe start to think about them what you want more of. Allowing those to kind of come up to the surface. And after you think about the things that you love about your home, start to bring your awareness a little bit out. We're going to kind of reverse the layers a little bit. And think about the things that you like about your neighborhood. 
Maybe it's one particular neighbor. Maybe it's the nice spot. Just starting to think about the things that you like. We can empower them. Maybe there's a community garden down the road and you don't even participate. You just drive by and smile because it looks like those people are doing a great thing, having a lot of fun. Maybe it's a local school or a playground. Maybe a river that's quiet or a walking path. Just pulling those up to the surface. Just really empowering those places, from the home to the neighborhood, and then maybe your town or your city. And thinking about your favorite places, your favorite spots, where do you feel safe, where do you feel happy, even if it's just one, one spot. Even if it's only slightly better than the other spots, which are all terrible. Trying to highlight even the smallest amount of good. empowering those places in our home, in our neighborhood, in our town. Sending them a little love, a little gratitude for how they make us feel. Empowering that connection with our gratitude. Just simply enjoying them. Maybe there's a place where you it looks beautiful at night, maybe there's sunsets that you can watch from a certain spot, whatever it is. Just gratitude for those little things in our home, in our world. So now that we've kind of shown our appreciation and connected to the things that are already there, that we love, giving them a little bit of luck and blessings, to hopefully bring in more of that, <clears throat> we're going to work with, um, this is Pyrite Brachiopod, and the lovely lady Susan sent me this. And so the brachiopod is like a fossil, you can kind of see it there, of an old ancient, I think it's like a sea creature, like a mussel or an oyster. But over time, as it became a fossil, it turned into pyrite. And we're looking at this as a, a kind of vision of transformation and how death can lead to transformation and rebirth of something new. And working with that energy as we start to think about our space and how we can turn, take what was old and turn it into something better for all 
for the benefit of all beings in that space. I'm bringing in that sort of idea of what we'd like to transform. What do we want to you know, change? Maybe you have a windowsill in your house you want to plant on to bring in more light. Maybe a spot in your backyard that you want for a garden or chickens. I highly recommend them. <laughs> I'm a big fan of chickens. But any of those ways that you'd like to repaint a room so it feels more calm. Or hang up a tapestry to make it feel inviting. It can be small, it can be big. Just starting to allow all of those ways that we can transform place. Starting to empower those transformations. Some will require your work, and maybe we can also open up pathways for other. You know, we've already connected to that network of um, around us, and we're kind of sending that energy of transformation along that network. Hopefully, empowering others to change and transform their place. So we're hoping some of those things that you will be conscious of, and then some of those things, maybe something changes. Maybe they decide to put it in a park, or change some way that they're teaching at your kid's school. Or maybe change the way they handle things. Just asking for a little bit of transformation on your part. And hoping for growth and transformation from the place that you live and the energy there. And allowing you to be a beacon of that gratitude and healing and transformation so that wherever you go, you can kind of send that out like pheromones or um little flower seeds in the air, planting that idea that we can fix this together in community. Another thing I like about this stone is its connection to kind of that ancient knowledge. There is story, this was a being, this literally was something alive and living and breathing and experiencing a place and a time that is so beyond what we can imagine. 
but here it is in my hand. Like, this was something. And so there's this story and knowledge that has passed on. And so when we talk about transformation, it's not just you now, but one day you will be a fossil of some kind, somewhere, somehow, and passing on that ancient knowledge from your time to someone else. And so when we talk about this transformation, we're not just talking about paving over and um, releasing the past completely. We're taking that information passed down in a chain of life from one end to the other, and we're just a part of that chain. Someone will live in your house after you. So you you'll be able to haunt somebody <laughs> if you would like. And acknowledging is part of a larger picture. And so what we do now is where we live, it's passed on to another generation and impacts them. And so it's not just about us in this singular point in time, as everything has been layers throughout this session. So is it layers of time that you are part of and that transformation that you happen to do now will benefit others, just as their choices may have benefited or affected you throughout. So finding our place in that chain of transformation. candle and talk a little bit more before finishing out. So hopefully you have a candle somewhere in your house that you've allowed to burn through this session or maybe you can watch it another time and kind of go through this process without me, that's fine. But if you can, Try to build up maybe an altar, a space, a place in your home where you honor that you are a physical being that has to be in a place at all times and how important caring for that place, no matter how big or how small, is so important to all of us within that chain. And so just honoring that for a moment with me, if you can. Maybe with your candle or that place. And we want to just capture that feeling of living and being in place and time. And how we can take a moment to really just sit with it and honor it because it is so very important. And it's one of those things that we can become disconnected from because life is busy and noisy and hectic. But that, just a few moments, once a week, once a lunar cycle, once a day, whatever fits, to just honor and give gratitude for where you live and that you have this place that you can call home, even if for a moment, And sitting with that for just a second. Perfect. I'm not gonna blow this candle out now. I'm gonna let her burn through the night. Just really kind of soak up and empower the energy that we've worked with today um, and let her continue to send her, her flame and her heat and her energy to that. Thank you so much for joining me during this session. I appreciate you so much. Sorry I was a little chatty, but I felt like I needed to talk about some of these concepts to make sure that I wasn't, um, I was being authentic as possible. Okay. 
and thank you once again to my patrons who um, allow me to do these extra long videos. I appreciate them so, so much. Um, here are all the ways you can support my channel, and I will see you in the next one.